Welcome to Real Talk Christian Podcast, where we drink coffee and have real conversations on faith, culture, and society. This is Mark Hyde. And Chris Fuller. And today, we are starting a new series on the podcast. We are. Big, bad Christian words that you probably should know. On the podcast, we use a lot of big Christianese words, and we figured, you know what? Let's just talk about them in the podcast. Figure out what they mean, where they come from, and what we should do about it. Sounds good, Fuller? Sounds good. Ready to go? Let's go! Let's go! Big bad words? Big bad Christian words, baby. Big, big bad? Big bad. I, that's just, that's just. Are they bad though? They're bad in like. Are they just big? No, no, no. They're they're bad in the 2000 sense bad. Like that's, he's oh, a bad like, mamma jamba. You bad, bad dude. He's a bad mamma jamba. The bad mamma jamba <laughs> right there. In case you are Gen Z or old and don't know, bad actually means good. And good actually means great. Welcome to the party, folks. Anyways, what are we uh, <laughs> what are we drinking today, Dude, Mr. I'm Mark? I'm actually really excited about this one. This was this good. Is, this is a good good. Now, drink. I didn't have my creamer because uh, this is the Sorry. first time we've recorded in over two months, guys. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been two months, so it's a little bit different. It is. But we is. are drinking Tokoa Ethiopian. Ethiopian. Yes. Ethiopian, which I had lunch with our worship pastor today, and yep, he yep. said he was listening to an old one of our episodes, and I mentioned how much I love african blends and so he went to a some coffee shop and they had different options you can get and he goes mark really likes african so let me try that and it was kenyan and he's like dude it was good africa. wasn't that toto that did that song um and then everyone else in yeah, the world right. but yes toto did africa. Yeah, africa so so he tried kenyan coffee because of how much we love ethiopia nice. or how much i love ethiopia but I will admit, I've stopped drinking a lot of African coffees, and I've been doing a lot of light Central uh, Central American roasts. You into my world now, but yeah, uh, you got me, bro. You know we're in the season right now of kind of diving right into diving it. in. I'm going deep. <laughs> Anyways, so it's, it's been two months, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and read this review now. <laughs> We can dive into the conversation. Love it. Because we have a lot of content to get through. We do got a lot of content. In 30 minutes. Here we go. It's Real Conversation to Ponder by David Bjorge. Bjorge. I'm going with it. Uh, I have been listening to their podcast for about a month after discovering them. The question and conversations they have are great because they are in-depth, tied back to the gospel and the word of God. Plus, they have responded well on Instagram to a few questions that I've asked. Hey, Mark. I try. Even my parents have enjoyed hearing the conversation that they hear while I pl I'm playing it loud. Uh, I, would, I would say that it has helped also deepen my faith in God. Well, David George, uh, you know us. We do hand out, if you're in the States, mini swag bags. So if you're in the States. And but you I got to make sure you do that caveat. In the States. Sorry, Sabrina. You don't Sorry. get nothing. So we'll be broke. We, oh, we David. Be broke. Oh, it's this David. 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 Oh, I think we actually read his review once because he messaged me saying what? that. We, so we've already read his review. What? Because no. I've been messaging him back and forth. And, um, Did you read it? No, because I want me. I'm going in order. No, man. but look, look at, look at, see, and he already has a. Oh, it went available. He already got oh. his mini swag bag. Oh, okay, cool. Well, there you go. D um, never mind, David. Don't get you don't get a second one. But I owe David a text from like three weeks ago. So <gasps> my bad Full boss, shame. my bad boss. But guys, just like what David said, dude, we want to hang out with you guys because the right. part of the podcast is not just us talking on the podcast. We want to engage with you. So head over to the Facebook group, or if you have more questions or concerns, you can bring those concerns to us too. But we want to keep the conversation, the community going over. Over there like you know our girl ellie who apparently has been listening since episode 38 and just commented for the first time yesterday that's right well i mean now it's like um, but april 12th yeah april 12th, april 12th. She, so see ellie you, you you commented and now we shouted your name out so now you have to comment more and she but, was like oh my goodness you both responded and then really uh, yeah i mean it's still weird it's still weird anyways guys. it's weird so it's really today weird. we're talking about big words yep. two big words in in particular two big words in particular and i actually fun fact had them separated Oh. Last night, I'm like, let's mm. just do justification. But the more I was thinking about it and I was reading and I was studying, everyone puts these two words together. They, they, they kind of go hand in hand. They are the same or different sides of the same coin. Exactly. And so I'm like, you know what? For this conversation, we could go really deep into one, but we were we would just bring the other one into the conversation and be like, oh, right. well, it's justification is this, not and, sanctification. And we've talked so. about, we've touched on the, these two words many, many times throughout the podcast history. But uh, yeah. we've never really dedicated a whole episode. I, I don't think to so. It, so. We've explained it a lot because I know there's a, in terms of how do faith and works work together. So we've had we've brought them into conversation. Right. We never had a dedicated one for that. Right. But you know when you read the one passage where it's like, um, what's that the passage in Ephesians where it's like um, you were called 
Um, and then it's uh, and whom he also called, he also then preordained. And then also uh, was that Ephi- Ephesians four. I don't remember Ephesians. See, this is why I like the dual screen here. Let's say we got a new setup, guys. So when I'm looking at the screen right there, you can see my eyes move on. That's unity and diversity. YouTube? Nope. That's, no. I think it was four. Um, I would say whom, whom he also called, he also glorified. And so, so basically, like, there's one passage, and we were reading this in church, and it was talking about all these different big words in one big foul swoop. Watch me have this in here later down the line. And I'm like, you know what? There's a lot of big words that Christians use throughout all of history that we just throw around. And I know a lot of our listener base, this is where some of our conversation comes from, is a, a lot of you guys who have reached out to us are, you're new to the faith, or you're just re-engaging with your faith, and you're trying to figure out just how it all works. And the last thing I want you guys to do is honestly, let's just be honest, fall behind or that it, Romans and those who did predestined. He also called those. He called, he justified and those he justified, he glorified. Romans. And so that's Romans eight. I think I actually have that verse. Let's see. Nope. I left that verse out. So good. But, but either way, so there's a lot of big Christian words out there. Like I have some of the lists like right here where like, you know, big words like salvation, redemption, justification, sanctification, purification, glorification, and election. And these are words that, you know, folks might know, but then there's some other more obscure words that you might hear us say once in a while that people might not really know the definition or where they come from. Words such as propitiation, substitutionary atonement, imputed righteousness versus impartial righteousness. And I think it's good to go through these words because there is actual... um, ramification for how you actually live your everyday life based on how you actually understand these terms. So then the question is, is why should we go through these terms? And I kind of already touched on some of them, but I have three reasons why we should go through these. Number one, the Bible uses these terms. True. And if the Bible talks about it, we probably should know what it is. True. Uh, Number two, these terms have actually been used throughout church history as a way to understand how faith and salvation work together. And then the third way, which I think is actually more a good reason for us to go through is it helps us understand our faith more in order to articulate to those who don't know the faith. So today we're going to talk about sanctification versus justification. So before we jump in, I first want to define what the terms are, because again, we don't have a whole lot of time on this episode. So I'm going to define what the terms are. We're going to see where we find those actually in the Bible, and then we're going to have a little bit of conversation around how we actually play those out in our everyday lives. Straight up, And we're going to try to do this in 20 minutes. So, so here we go. All right. So I got the uh, justification definition from the Easton Bible dictionary and sanctification. I got from the Lexham Bible dictionary. So justification is to make sure I don't mess it up. Ooh, it's up there on the screen too. Okay. You like that, don't you? It, it is, but it's kind of hard to read. So I'm going to read on my little iPad. Um, so justification is a forensic term opposed to condemnation. As in regards to its nature, it is the judicial act of God by which he pardons all of the sins of those who believe in Christ and accounts, accepts, and treats them as righteous in the eye of the law. In other words, as conformed to all of the law's demands. In addition to the pardon of sin, justification declares that all the claims of the law are satisfied in respect of the justified. It is an act of a judge and not of a sovereign. The law is not relaxed or set aside, but it is declared to be fulfilled in the strictest sense. And so the person justified is declared to be entitled to all the advantages and rewards arising from perfect obedience to the law. Justification is not the forgiveness of a man without righteousness, but a declaration that he possesses a righteousness which perfectly and forever satisfies the law, namely Christ's righteousness. So justification is the fact of, we know you don't deserve this, but we're going to treat you just as if everything has ever been fulfilled totally them. And so it's like, if someone is justified in their actions, it's the fact of it is what it is. But yeah. anyway, so, so no. that's justification is even though someone is like, they have sinned and they are sinners, God, because of Jesus's sacrifice views them as if they never sinned in the first place. Right. That's justification. Whereas with sanctification, it refers broadly to the concept of being set apart as sacred. In Genesis 2, 3, God sanctified the seventh day, which means he set it apart as sacred. In Leviticus, Yahweh tells the entire people of Israel to maintain being sanctified, to maintain being set apart as sacred. This aspect of the concept of sanctification is closely related to holiness and biblical regulations for maintaining purity. The New Testament similarly reflects the idea that the followers of Christ have been sanctified or set apart as uh as a result of Christ's holiness. This idea that Christians have been made holy before God through their faith in Christ is related to justification. 
Hence why we're doing both those terms today. Mm -hmm. In Christian theology, a distinction is sometimes made between justification and sanctification, where justification refers to having saving faith, and sanctification refers to the process of gradual purification from sin and progressive spiritual growth that should mark the life of a believer. This doctrine of sanctification draws on the New Testament passages that emphasize a move towards holy and righteous living that characterize following faith, uh, following Christ in faith. So before we move on, Fuller, I want to know, do we like those definitions? Or do you want to dive into those a little bit? Well... Uh, so I just want to recap it in, in simpler terms. But I say, cause those are a lot of big terms for big words. <laughs> yeah. For, for <laughs> trying to simplify it. But so, so justification, can we justify ourselves, Mark? No, no. And it says that someone has to justify well, you. You have to be justified. Yes. Which is being saved through, right? Being yes. saved by grace is what we see. What's, what's the, so, uh, what's that old thing where it's like justifies, like just as if I never did or something like that. Isn't like a like there was like a little tongue and cheek thing that I learned when I was younger that I, 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 don't, I don't remember. I don't know. I was Pentecostally raised. <laughs> <laughs> no, but keep going, keep going. T- t- tongues we got, but not cheeks. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> good. Yeah. Where, where's your uh, rim? Do you have a rim shot? You need a rim shot in your stream deck. Uh, nope. That's what I got. That's, that's, that's the closest. Enough. That's a drum roll. Anyways, uh, so sanctification. Uh, I liked what it said here, where it's. Uh, uh, I gotta go find it again. Is the gradual purification from sin and pro- uh, progressive spiritual growth that should mark the life of every believer? Now, the question is: Can we be sanctified on our own? Can, I think there's can, a this there's, 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 there's a bit of a twofold process. Yeah, because sanctification requires us to a willful heart, right? And requires us to obedience. live the way of obedience. Willful heart, obedience through the leading of Christ. Now, but the sanctification also is a work of the Holy Spirit as well. But we have to choose to continue to walk right, but at, walk in the way as as the Holy Spirit reveals, we right. grow. Right. So it's a, it's a, that's the hand in hand, right? That's where we work with the Holy Spirit in that growth process, in that, in that progressive spiritual growth. It's a, it's a, uh, yes and no. So no. Let's, 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 let's keep diving in. We, we won't yeah. jump into the verses yet. We'll do, con- we'll do questions now, guys. Whoa. So, so here's kind of my thought is, you know, a lot of people get tripped up in their Christian walk of the difference between sanctification and justification, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And so I guess my question would be is, how do we keep these things separate in our minds? We're like, like, like I'm thinking of some people that have messaged me inside the RTC sure, Facebook. Sure. Like, man, I'm trying, but I feel like I always screw up. I always fall. Like, like I don't even feel like I'm a Christian anymore. Am I even a Christian? Which kind of results in the fact of if we can't justify ourselves, could we ever fall out of justification? Where all of a sudden, like, like, like a judge may, like, okay, like let's when, say a judge justified you, but then sure. you went and still, you still don't gone messed up. When were we justified? when you first believed no when were we justified when did the justification process happen you, you mean like jesus on the cross yes okay sorry so christ paid like, for wait, sins what? once and for all right in adam all of sin but in christ all are made alive correct right so that justification which we have no part in right we don't have a part because we have to be justified according to the definition right right somebody has to somebody else has to do that for us so that process was done at the cross, plain simple. Now, there's a requirement to having that justification applied to us, right? Which is believe in your mouth or believe in your believe in heart. The Christ Jesus, yeah, that, confess and, with your mouth, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Lord Jesus and you will be saved, right. which is Romans ten. So yeah, ten twenty three, ten eight through ten. Okay. Sure. It's technically 10. I think it's 623, and that's uh, so 323 for all is all, sin all, fall short of the glory that's of God. 323. Uh, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Yeah, Jesus I'm thinking Christ Romans Road here. <laughs> Come on, baby. Come on, preach it. So, uh, so that's really where it comes down to the brass tacks, right? That, that's where you the rubber that term. the rubber meets the road. The the uh, proof is in the pudding. There yeah. you go. Proof is in the pudding. No, the proof is in the pudding. Is Put that the money where your mouth is? Right. Is that Christ has paid for sin once and for all, and we have a part to do of just accepting and believing. Right. Accepting that Christ paid the sin debt. Right. Yep. And receiving that sin debt that or receiving that that justification and proclaiming Him to be Lord of all. That's all we got to do. So. 
You do that in your heart, right? It says believe in your heart, not with your mouth. Mm-hmm. It says confess with your mouth. Confess your you, because you have to actually physically say the words. Not of, confess in your heart, but confess with your, your mouth, mouth and not, but believe in your heart. Not believe with your mouth, but believe with your heart. That Christ Jesus is Lord and raised. So from understand the, dead. the difference in that because just because you do lip service saying yeah, I'm, uh, I believe with my mouth, like Lord, yeah, I believe you. That's conf- that's believing with your mouth, not with your heart. You got to believe in your heart and you got to confess with your mouth. And I think that's what people get scared about is the fact of well, well, you know the, the the question going back to. To, um, did I ever commit the imparable sin? Same sure. idea where it's like, what if I'm only confessing my mouth and not believe in my heart? Because there's that passage I would, I would where say, Jesus says like, you know, we did miracles your name and he goes, peace out. I never knew you. I would like, say if you're worried woo. about it, it probably means you're his. <laughs> if you're truly that concerned about it, if it bothers you, that's a good sign, right? Because you should be. That's the Holy Spirit convicting you of whatever sin you think you committed that made that, right? So you should confess that sin, right? Because he's just to forgive us of our sins. Mm-hmm. And faithful to cleanse us right. from all unrighteousness. 100%. And I think this is where some of the conversation and confusion comes in, specifically with other denominations. And this is where the big conversations with Calvinism and Arminianism do come in with this conversation of could you ever lose your stance with God? Well, so I'm going to break, I'm gonna you know? break this down real simple terms. And it's not the perfect parable, but I think it, it explains the, the in basic terms, terms we understand. Okay. Justification, sanctification. Justification is the act of a baby being born, right? We were born. Right. We had no part in the being born. Nope, we just showed up. We just showed up, right? Sanctification is the growth. Right. Right. That's the baby growing to adulthood. Which we, we have Which some natural growth. We have natural growth. We we go to school, we learn, so there's some growth that we do, but there's also people teaching us to help us in that growth process. And, and there's also the level of you got to want it too. Correct. So, yeah. So, like, say you wanted to, I don't know, be a podcaster. You got to put time and effort into it, right? <laughs> you got to do that. As, as you grow and as you understand and as you study, you get better and better and better, and then eventually you're Joe Rogan. I don't know. Probably that's a terrible example. That's not the goal. That, that's not the goal. But uh, but that's, you know, in simple terms, that's what sanctification is. It's that growth process that that is partially natural, partially you. And I say natural because as you become a Christian, you you put away those sinful things. You, you set your mind on on the p- things pure of God, and that's what you focus on. That's kind of the natural. And then, but you also, you, you also try, right? That's our, that's our studying the word and praying. And then people help you. That's your pastors, your elders, your overseers, your tribe, God, the Holy Spirit, using those people, your church. That's that helping you through that growth process as well, I think, in the natural terms of things. And so I guess that's my parable. That's how I would explain justification and sanctification in the very basic terms. I like it. So, so let me read a couple of passages of scripture yeah, here. So that way we at least get the scripture involved yep, too, yep, not yep. just our thoughts. So I have two uh, passages. There was lots of them guys, but I brought two passages in primarily for justification two primarily for sanctification. Sure. And then there's some more questions coming on the back end of that. So Colossians two verses 13 through 14 says this, and we were dead in our trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh. He made you alive and forgave us all of our trespasses. He erased the certificate of death with its obligation. So he didn't just erase death, right? He erased what was required to no longer be dead. Yep. And that, uh, the, with his obligations, that was against us and opposed to us and has taken it away by nailing it to the cross. So that's kind of yep. what you were talking about earlier, yep. where when did justification actually happen? At the cross. Happen at the cross. Through Jesus. Now, this is, I will say, though, this is where Protestants and Catholics do part ways, because sure. we will agree with that statement. But then the question is the fact of, okay, so does that then just apply to you, like, internally, and, and, and it's imparted on, into us that, that justification and um, sanctification process, or do we just get, this is where imparted versus imputed, different episode, yep, yep. keep in touch, where we put on Jesus, and so our inner man is still sinful, but when Jesus, or when God looks at us, he doesn't look at us as perfect, he looks at Jesus as perfect. Well, I think Paul makes the case for us, though. Okay, lean into it. All right, well, uh, I think it's Romans 6, I'm terrible, but Romans 6, it's I think. It's been a bit. Right? Six or seven, yeah, six or seven, where it talks about the things that I don't want to do, I do, and the things that I do want to do, I don't do. That struggle with the inner man, he talks about that all the time, and 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 fighting off the the evils of the flesh. That's the mm-hmm. inner man. So, I think when God looks at us, right, it's not us that He's looking at; it's Christ putting His shawl or His covering or His whatever you want to call it over us, yep. right? And and it's Christ, or it's it's Christ standing in the stead in the visual of God being our advocate saying, no, I've paid this debt that they're okay. 
Yeah, so let's keep reading and yeah, go, go into that it. a little bit. So Romans 3, 21 through 26 says very much similar to what you said. It says, but now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been revealed, attested by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe, since there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. They are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. God presented him as the mercy seat, him being Jesus. God presented Jesus as the mercy seat by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness because in his restraint, God passed over the sins previously committed, leaning back into Passover. Yep. God presented him to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time so that way he would be just and justify the one who has faith in Jesus. So how do we get justified you have faith in Jesus. There you go. That's where the Done. justification process, which honestly seems so ridiculous that it's that easy. I right. think that's where there's a lot of, like, for for folks who are either looking on the outside, they're trying to figure out Christianity. You know, all other religions, you're trying to go to God. You got to earn in it. Christianity, God came to us, and you just have to literally and justify the one who has faith in Jesus. Like, that's it? That's all you got to do? Pretty that easy. faith in Jesus? That's that's very easy. But then that's when but it's saying... it's got to be true faith. Again, faith from right. the heart, the believing of the heart. And, and I do have a question that I think would be a fun conversation where it says, could someone be justified yet have no fruits to prove it? And that's where... So let's not go yet. Let's not go there yet. Let's not go there yet, even though it's our 21 minutes. So um, we got nine, we got to close this in eight minutes. Let's go. Let's here we go. go. First Corinthians 6, 9 through 11 says, Don't you know that the unrighteousness will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. No sexually immoral people, idolaters, adulterers, or males who have sex with males. No thieves, greedy people, drunkards, verbally abusive people, or swindlers will inherit God's kingdom. And some of you used to be like this, but you were washed. You were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Philippians 2, 12 through 16 says, Therefore, my dear friends, just as you have always obeyed, so now, not only in my presence, but even more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works both in you to will and to work according to his good purpose. Do everything without grumbling and arguing, so that way you may be blameless and pure, Children of God who are faultless in a crooked and perverted generation, among whom you shine like stars in the world by holding firm to the word of life. Mic drop. <laughs> and so when you look at that, you know, we yeah. do see the separation between justification and sanctification. Yep. And in sanctification, and you know, we we, we have another conversation coming up, guys. So I, I know you're like, we haven't done a whole lot with sanctification. We have an episode coming up actually here in just a little bit. Are we doing it next week where we talk about yep. prayer yep. and action, how well, those work? Well, two weeks, and, yes. And sign, uh, oh, every other week. Sorry, guys. But we do have some other conversations coming up where we will talk more about faith and works and yep. go back into the archives because we have a lot about faith and works as well. But... I think this is the big part of this conversation is who does the justifying, who does the sanctification, and could someone say they're justified without doing the good works, and can someone do the good works without being justified? I think in, in justification, right, the justification is done by Christ, but it's also that believing and confessing, right? That's the first step, uh, and then... And this is where it gets weird because is that a work to gain your salvation? So or not, is like that's like the ah, it's it's not really a work as so much as it is as a submission. A, a submission or realization it's of a, what it is. Yeah, exactly. It's more of a submission of like it's not a work, it's just like bro. okay, you're you're God. Like bro. like you're God. It's just that I'm admitting it, you're God. Um, That'd be the greatest salvation decision. Can you, just be like, bruh. Can you be justified and not show fruit? So this one's a little bit harder to paint a brush stroke on because it depends on the person and the heart. And no man could judge the heart save God. Correct. Right? So, But I, you can judge by the fruit. Of, by a, a, a tree by a so fruit. So I would say if you claim to be, can you be, can you be justified and not sanctified? I think part of the justification is that change. Mm -hmm. It's an immediate change of realizing what God has done for you. Which we didn't so, bring those verses in, the old man versus the new. Right. So uh, there's there's that change in you that happens where your desires change of, I'm no longer going to live for me, I'm going to live for God, which produces a change in you. So I would say to have no fruit, I would, I would seriously, if I was the person that says I'm saved or justified but not producing fruit, I would really look at my heart and am I being honest or am I believing with my mouth and confessing with my heart kind of thing like, oh, yeah, I'm a sinner, and God, you're real, but not really believing it. And so I would, 
I would seriously consider that if if I were in those shoes. But again, I think it really depends on the person where they're at because we can judge by the fruit, but we may not always see the fruit either. So there, there you know, there, there's a there's a fine line. I think of Galatians six one. If you find a brother in sin, those of you who are righteous, go to him and be gentle and loving and bringing him back into the fold so that ye yourselves may not fall into the same mm, temptation. Mm-hmm. So just jumping in and judging because you don't see fruit is not always necessarily the best thing either because in that yourself, you may fall into the same temptation or sin. So don't, I think it's really important to be, what's that scripture? Be uh, wise as serpents and as harmless and as gentle doves. gentle as doves. Yep. And so and that, that's really what you got you to gotta keep your minds focused on. Um, during those types of conversations with people, I think. Yeah, you know, there's a... I, I was looking at past podcast episodes of, you know, different conversations we've had. We've had one where, like, can I lose my salvation, which goes into this conversation. That's episode 163, and I believe 164 would be part two. Um, and we have a lot of other different conversations, too, like how to grow closer to God, how do I know I'm a Christian, how do you deal with deconstruction, all that kind of stuff. Yep. But, you know, I, I remember this quote, and I, I feel like I bring it up quite a bit, the Bonhoeffer quote, where it's only... Um, Oh crap! Now I'm gonna embarrass myself by not getting it right. Only, only the believers obey, and only the obedient believe. And it kind of goes hand in hand with the fact of if you say you are this, you will do this. Right. And if you do this, it's a proof in the pudding that that you believe that what you do. If I say I love Notre Dame, but never watch Notre Dame, do you love Notre Dame? No. You could be a cultural. If you live in South Bend, you're a cultural Notre Dame fan, whether you like it or not. Yeah. If but- you're not a real fan. Right, but do you love Notre Dame? Like, like, are you a fan fan? Like, you know what I mean? Mm. And so I guess that's... Or are what, you following, you know, peanut butter and jelly time? Or are you following that Sam Hartman going to the NFL? You see Xavier, Xavier, dude, Xavier Watts coming back. Right. So that's it, Xavier Watts. Or are you just Xavier, like, yeah, Xavier I watch the football back. games and I'm good to, with that. And like the kind of midline road, you know, maybe yep. not a lot of fruits, but a little fruit, you know? Um, and I guess that's a, the worldly way of putting that into more of a realistic visual of what that looks and, like. And, you know, so when it comes back to us, though, you know, what, what what does this conversation mean for us in the everyday? You know, I feel like there's all, so many people who get so scared about, am I Christian or not? And yeah. we put our we put our salvation in our own hands versus putting it in God's hands. Right. And putting it in Jesus' hands. And putting what not what we do, but what Jesus has done. Yep. Not what we do, right. but what Jesus has done. That's what justifies us. But yep. then there's the sanctification, sanctification process where we grow in all things in godliness. Um, oh shoot, what's that verse where? And you can't have your, one with the other. Add to your, uh, add to your was add to your faith virtue and add to your virtue this. It's like add, add uh, there's basically add to your faith all these different things. And it's the fact of it's a growth, it's a journey, it's 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 a process. You know, like so many people think faith is an end des- destination, but I really think it's. It, it is a journey. Like, you right. know, it's it's a journey from, sure, you go from death to life, but then what does it mean to walk in newness of life? Right. And, you know, I think a lot of people do get really scared with the fact of if you can save yourself, you can also unsave yourself. Mm. If you walk into the faith, you can walk out of the faith. And right. there are some verses in the Bible that seem to talk about that where Jesus says, if you deny me, I'm denying you, bro. Yep. Which is like, uh, wait, what? But that's because they don't spend time with the Father, right? Or you would, if you you would never deny Jesus if you really were with Him, right, right? Which makes the question about Peter at the end, where it's like, was Peter really with Jesus at that point, or was that the kick in the butt homeboy needed and actually to to go and do it? Yeah. And so that's where I think a lot of people or do have that struggle. You know, was he on the mountain hop, right top, and now he's in the valley? Anyway, so and then you get restored back to your faith, but again, that doesn't change your justification process. That's the sanctification process. And then the last question that some people might ask is: I know we got to wrap this up. Is could you ever become so perfectly sanctified that you never sin anymore? Because there are some traditions that believe that yes, Methodism is one. Yes, Wesleyan's the one. Yes, you can, but not on the side of heaven. So, so when you, so when you did, <laughs> so yeah, when you did. And that's the thing is sanctification is an ongoing process to be continually set apart. So going back to the definitions, you know, justification is a judicial term. It is an act of God declaring you as if you have never sinned, right? That's what justification is. Whereas sanctification is the part of being set apart and sacred. And and I do want to end one more time with this last little part of the verse in uh, Philippians 2, verse 15 and 16, where it says, uh, do everything without grumbling and arguing, so that way you may be blameless and pure, children of God who are faultless in a crooked and pervert or, is, or perverse, this good old King Jimmy, or perverted generation, among whom you shine like stars in the world by holding firm to the word of life.
time for Fun Facts with Fiddler. <laughs> All right, my dude. We uh, we 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 almost got under thirty. Minutes. Almost so close, but bro, what fun fact? Do you got for us today? So I can't remember if I've done this fun fact, but I asked Janine and she didn't remember. So I said, all right, we're I going just with looked. it. I know this one. So I do know this one. This one's one. an interesting one, right? So did you know, well, you do, but did you know, listeners, that chainsaws were first invented for childbirth? Bum, bum, bum. It was developed in Scotland in the late 18th century to help aid and speed up the process of symphysotomy, well, widening the uh, area cartilage down there, and removing... A removal of a disease-laden bone during childbirth. It wasn't until the start of the 20th century that we started using chainsaws for chopping wood. That's that's kind of scary. Well, especially since like Amy Beth has had a C-section, Janiel had a C-section. Could you imagine, dude? Okay, with as traumatic as like the C-sections were that you had to go through with with Janiel and the one that Beth had to. All of a sudden, you hear it's like. What's what you about to do with that, well, boss? And you know there. There wasn't anesthesia back then. Like, they weren't putting you under for that. Like, it was just like, you can't, yeah. we are a bunch of weak yes. people yes. nowadays. Yes, we are. <laughs> I don't know how to segue out. Normally, but you know really what else we're weak at? Segways. And so we're going to just jump right in. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was brilliant. But hey, just like always, guys, we want to continue the conversations. I have more questions from this episode. We'll be posted in the Facebook group. Let's keep the conversation going over there. If you are not part of the Facebook group, just look it up, RTC Online Community. Or if you like us on Facebook, there's a link right from there as well. Find us on the other social media channels, which we're not crazy active on. We're mainly active in the Facebook group. So make sure you check us out over there. And uh, if you haven't already, wow, I'm so out of practice. Uh, you go ahead. Boss, you got it. Go to YouTube and hit that subscribe button and that bell notification. Hey. So when we're on on you random know. times like him sometimes, uh, you'll know. Which I have gone live. I, got, have. I have gone live you a couple have. times. And if you want to, you know, maybe get yourself a little RTC swag, a little RTC merch, the store is still open. So go to Real Talk Christian Podcast Act dot now. com. Click store. Then it'll take it over to our Redbubble account where you can purchase your own RTC merch. That's right. Anything else for these wonderful people? Fuller? I don't think so. I love it, guys. We love you guys. And until next time, take it easy.